What's up guys? After playing around a bit with Zoyuz, I wanted to make a video about where she fits into the current battleship scene. But because there are so many different situations where one ship that's generally considered weaker might be more useful than another, I decided to change course and just talk about the strengths and weaknesses of all the rainbow battleships. There won't be much number crunching in this video, so it should be an easier watch for beginner and intermediate players as opposed to my typical video. I'm just gonna go down the list of ships in my dock that show up when I filter by UR battleships. I will be including Kursarge as well since this is probably where she fits best. You may see that I have some dupes of ships lying around, which I keep around to hold skins for secretary purposes. The only dupe that I actually raised fully was Vanguard, just to have an easier time sinking. But it's really not worth the erase unless you really like her in my opinion. I'll talk about it more when I get to her. Okay, first up, we've got New Jersey. The thing you might be wondering is why I'm using her default skin. And the answer to that is because I don't feel like getting my channel reported. I don't know what exactly the rules are on YouTube, so I'm just playing it safe. Oh, and by the way, when I talk about their strengths and weaknesses, they're going to be relative to other rainbow battleships, not just battleships as a whole. Unlike other whole classes, where lower rarity ships could be better than rainbows in some situations, rainbow battleships pretty much always reign supreme. Also, I'm playing on the Japanese version, so if you're not already familiar with the skills of these ships, then please look them up on the wiki first. The equipment I have on the ships are not recommendations, so don't put too much thought into them. Let's start with her strengths. The thing that really sets her apart these days is that she fires her barrage 10 seconds into the battle. Unlike when she first came out, she's no longer the absolute strongest in terms of raw power, so the extra barrage helps to make up for her lower damage. 10 seconds into the fight, unless UVH or FDG's proximity barrages were triggered, no other battleship would have done anything so she would have the highest damage output. Then by the first salvo, she's already fired off two barrages, so she's still going to be the strongest. Other battleships start catching up from the second salvo and then onward. So the shorter the battle is, the stronger she is relative to the other battleships. This is why to this day, she is still a staple in PvP where striking first is very important, but I can't say I'm particularly knowledgeable in that domain. Next, her crossfleet buff is one of the best, giving USS carriers a hefty 15% aviation on top of having a crossfleet barrage. Unfortunately, there aren't that many crazy strong USS carriers to take advantage of it right now, but it should age well as more of those are introduced into the game. Another good thing about her is that she is permanently available now, and out of all the permanently available battleships, she is pretty much the best you can get. However, even though it's not particularly complicated to get her, it's also not recommended to spend your cubes off event limited banners, so it would take a while. She also has some other things going for her, such as the fact that she is very consistent because of her relatively high accuracy and low spread, as well as the ability to start a strong burn through her barrage, but I wouldn't necessarily classify those as strengths, because they're simply factors that increase her damage and consistency, but don't always put her damage over the other battleships. Now, let's move on to her weaknesses. First, she has pretty much no AoE damage, so she struggles in battles with multiple enemies. This includes campaign stages and a few of the recent meta bosses. Speaking of campaign, her auxiliary gun being a destroyer gun definitely does not help with that either. Another weakness is that her fleet buffs are quite limited, and often completely irrelevant. Her firepower buff only applies to USS battleships or battlecruisers, of which the only rainbow one is herself, and only 10% at that. It is in this buff that her age really shows when you compare it to Bismarck's way or Soyuz's buffs, which are higher both in number and applicability. If she would have been released this year instead, I'm sure she would give all USS ships 15% firepower and aviation at least. And who knows, maybe we'll see another Iowa class battleship this year with just that. She also wants another USS ship in the fleet to activate her self-firepower and reload buff, 
Once upon a time, this was a non-issue because Helena was widely used, and Anchorage was one of the best, if not the best tank in the game, for many boss fights. These days, there's enough damage going around that rolling for Helena's RNG is no longer necessary, and for some reason, enemies are dealing less damage as well, so oftentimes you don't even need a proper tank. Even if you do, there are more options now with all the large cruisers, Yatsan Russia Fit, the new Iron Blood Destroyers, and so on. Other really good USS ships include Kearsarge and a few of the carriers, but she doesn't play well with any of them at all, offering no support whatsoever to the carriers in her own fleet. There are also Guam and Laffy, but they're not really suited for a battleship bossing fleet. To summarize, New Jersey mostly shines in shorter, single enemy battles with her extra early barrage. She's had her time in the spotlight, and it was quite a long time, but due to every other new UR release being a battleship for whatever reason, there are a lot of better options now. But she is still very usable and one of the very best permanently available ships. The next ship is Kearsarge. She's not a battleship and is quite unique, but I believe this is where she would be the most fitting. Her strength lies within the massive amount of carrier buffs in her kit, including a built-in air raid assistance buff which frees up a slot in your vanguard for something else. She also has a pretty decent fighter slot which helps your carriers stay concealed from enemy planes, something that other battleships cannot do. Having planes in aviation means that, unlike other battleships, she contributes pretty significantly to your ACV and interception in campaign, which comes in handy especially in chapter 15. Aside from that, she also deals enough damage and slightly buffs shelling damage, making her a completely fine pick in battleship fleets as well. Her personal damage is not the highest, but it's not much weaker than New Jersey for example. In terms of weaknesses, I find the most annoying part to be her equipment and fleet restrictions. Since she wants USS or Northern Parliament guns or planes, it removes a lot of timing options. Granted, she doesn't need to time anything for her carrier buffs, but not syncing with the rest of the fleet makes her miss out on a lot of buffs and debuffs from other ships that she could otherwise benefit from. For example, if you are to use her against heavy armor, her only good main gun option is the 457mm, which wouldn't play well with Implacable's route timing. For the fleet restriction, she needs to be sortied with a USS carrier to activate her air raid assist, and since Yorktown 2 is quite a bit better than all the other currently available options, she's pretty much stuck with Yorktown 2 plus another, almost always implacable, as her fleet comp. You can try using Kearsarge with other ships, but that specific setup will pretty much always be the best for everything. Something else that I'm sure most people are already aware of is that since she's an aviation battleship, she misses out on a lot of battleship and battlecruiser specific buffs, like Vanguard's on reload buff, New Jersey's firepower buff, male officer talents, and so on. But in my opinion, this is only a problem if her damage is lacking due to not having access to all those buffs. But it isn't given what she provides aside from damage, so it's a bit of a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. One last thing is that she doesn't have a proper secondary gun, so her interception is going to be questionable in campaign compared to other battleships. To summarize, Kearsarge is a very powerful force multiplier with respectable damage of her own, but her fleet and equipment restrictions means that you're pretty much going to be running the same fleet of Kearsarge, Yorktown, and Implacable all the time with her, or else you'll end up with subpar results. Keep in mind though that it is only a drawback in variety, as the fleet is extremely powerful and often one of, if not the best, for fighting light or medium armor enemies. Next up is Vanguard. She is pretty simple. Her strength is that she increases the damage of your entire fleet by 10%, and then another 8% for battleships and battlecruisers, but only on paper as it's quite difficult to perfectly sink her in practice. Her weakness is that her own damage is much weaker than that of the other rainbow battleships, meaning that if you have a bunch of weak ships in your fleet, and then Vanguard, she's not going to be able to carry them as hard as some of the other rainbow battleships. Let's take a look at the Kirov meta run from my Soyuz showcase, and do some quick calculations to see how much damage Vanguard is contributing. Since Vanguard's bonuses are all debuffs, which stack multiplicatively with other damage bonuses, it's quite easy to calculate. Summing up the Vanguard damage, we get about 750,000 
so Vanguard contributed about 68,000 damage. The other two battleships did a total of 950,000, about 15% of which I would estimate to be from Vanguard's buffs, because she buffs about 3 of their salvos out of 4 with the setup, and this sums up to 124,000 damage coming from Vanguard's debuffs. In total, Vanguard is contributing just under 200,000 to the fleet on top of her end screen damage. Since some of her own damage is from Zoyu's and Bismarck's help as well, let's just round her total damage down to 400,000, which is about the same as Zoyu's damage would be without if Vanguard wasn't there. If you replace her with another ship that can do more than 400,000, then they could be better. However, keep in mind that you only have two 406 MK7s, and she's contributing 400k with a random plus 10 gold gun. It doesn't make much of a difference if you use the improved Odin gun or twin 406 SKC, she'll still contribute about this much damage. While the strongest AP guns are permanently available, the same principle still applies. If you're using Vanguard, it's not that important to have 3 plus 13 guns as opposed to 2 and giving her a plus 10, so it's more or less strictly a beneficial effect. You also have to factor in how tight the timing for the final salvo is at the end, meaning that another battleship with a triple barrel gun will certainly push you to use more autoloaders on everyone just to make it in time. Which also brings me to this lower reload vanguard dupe. I raised her because I like vanguard as a character and for convenience. However, I barely end up using her. Like I just said, the timing for the last salvos of the other two battleships is already super strict in meta fights. So if I attempted to use Vanguard to buff every salvo of the other two battleships, I would have to stick auto loaders on all of them, in which case I might as well just use the max reload Vanguard anyway. In Operation Siren where you have 10 more seconds in the end, I still don't end up using her just because so many bosses have anti-shelling skills, and I pretty much always use carrier fleets instead. The only time where the slower Vanguard is kinda nice to have is challenge mode because the fight lasts for a while, so it's nice to have a tighter sync. But challenge mode doesn't really have a scoreboard, and the hardest difficulty is auto abo with more than 5 minutes to spare, so it's not really game changing in any way. To summarize, Vanguard is primarily a buffer for all the other ships in the fleet, specifically battleships and battlecruisers. Since her own damage is only about half her contribution and she has no particular restrictions, she is super unselfish and will make the most out of your weak leftover equipment. She is almost always the best choice as the third battleship in a battleship only fleet. Next up is Musashi. Her greatest strength is the skill that allows her to cover for the other two main fleet ships until her HP drops below 30%. This makes her far and away the best ship in the game for high pressure campaign stages, such as chapters 14 and 15, as it is the only reliable way of completely removing the chance of your healer being one shot out of nowhere like Diavolo did to Abakio. Additionally, she deals the most damage against Heavy out of all the battleships, and her barrage also increases damage from all sources by 10% against Heavy. As a result, her competition against Heavy is typically not in the form of other battleships, but rather from carriers. As for weaknesses, the most glaring one is her lack of main gun options. Her barrage is already the weakest against Light relative to its damage against the other two armor types, and having no strong HE gun on top of that makes her a worse pick than a few of the other battleships against light armor. She has no trouble against medium, but if I had to guesstimate how the battleships stack up to each other against medium armor in terms of damage contribution only, it would probably go something like Soyuz, and then Bismarck or Vanguard, then Musashi or New Jersey. This would be for a battleship only fleet though, and if carriers are involved then Vanguard would probably fall a bit but Kearsarge would enter the rankings as well. To summarize, Musashi is the best battleship in late game campaign stages, and deals the most damage by a large margin against heavy armor. But due to her gun choices, her damage is not the best against light armor, and she suffers from stiff competition against medium as well. Next up is UVH. Her strengths are her damage uptime and cross fleet barrage. Even though her damage per hit is lower than other battleships, it's still high enough to one shot most enemies in campaign allowing her to dispatch threats very quickly. She also has a barrage which applies a weak slow for just 3 seconds, but because her cooldowns are so low, it gets applied quite frequently and it works nicely to set up her own volleys after the first one. 
Her cross fleet barrage can proc up to 6 times and helps with interception, which is probably the most useful cross fleet barrage in the game. Her total damage output is also among the best against light armor, but not the very best. As for weaknesses, first, her medium and heavy damage output is on the lowest side, so she's rarely used against those types of bosses. Next, she has to go in the off lag, otherwise there is nothing unique about her compared to any other rainbow battleship, so it's difficult to sortie her as a solo battleship when you need interception. Finally, her damage decrease effect also stacks additively with out of ammo debuff, meaning she deals pretty much no damage off lag out of ammo, which makes her a bit of a pain to use in campaign mobs. And just one last personal nitpick, every time a battleship fires their main guns, there is an animation that lasts 3 seconds in Africa that you have to sit through. And since UVH fires twice as often as a typical battleship, it adds up in the long run, so I personally avoid using her for more than just her cross fleet barrage. However, it's not a real drawback if we keep things within the boundary of the game. To summarize, UVH is a unique battleship that's mostly going to see using campaign boss fleet for her damage uptime and cross fleet support for the mob fleet. Occasionally, she can be a great option against light armor bosses as well. Next up is Bismarck's Way. Her greatest strength is her black hole, which gathers all the enemies within its range into the same spot. In fights with multiple enemies, this ensures that all AoE damage will hit all the enemies at once, which is something that no other ship in the game can do. And it's tied to her main gun cooldown as well, making it very easy to sync with. Even against a single enemy, the black hole can stop the enemy from moving unpredictably, but since the duration is not very long, it's not as good as something like Implacable's Root against a single enemy. Even though she doesn't have any direct buffs for her carriers, the black hole's effect can guarantee that most of their airstrike lands. It also allows rockets, which are generally a single target focused type of damage due to their small AoE, to hit multiple enemies as the black hole gathers all the enemies into a single spot. Aside from the black hole, she also deals the highest damage of all the battleships against light armor, and one of the highest against medium, likely top 2 with Soyuz. Not only that, but she also has pretty significant buffs for iron blood ships, which are pretty commonly used these days with options like Hindenburg, A-Gear, UVH, and the new destroyers. Her barrage has a weaker version which fires for even salvos, but it's not really a weakness because you're always going to fire off the stronger one before the weaker one, and the two versions averaged together is still very strong. One last thing she has going for her is the Unfulfilled Promise Auxiliary, which makes her main fleet deal 30% more damage when out of ammo. It says that it decreases the effect of out of ammo debuff from 50% to 35%, which turns your damage from 50% to 65%, a net increase of 30%. Now I know there are people who will never in their life understand what I just said, so I won't bother explaining further. Some players like to use this when full clearing a stage, because it does contribute a great amount of damage, but it comes at the cost of the safety that is provided from using Musashi. And I personally prefer the stability of Musashi, so I never really used this aspect of her kit. In terms of actual weaknesses, she has very little. All I can nitpick on is the fact that if the enemy themselves are not moving at all, then the black hole actually ends up moving them a bit toward the top of the circle, so it would be better off if it wasn't there. Also, her damage is not the best against heavy, but it's not particularly worse than the other battleships aside from Musashi. To summarize, Bismarck's Way is the highest damaging battleship in the game against light armor, one of the heaviest against medium, and has irreplaceable utility with her black hole all of which comes with little to no drawback. Next up is FDG. Her biggest strengths are her AoE damage and low cooldowns, which makes her a great mob fleet damage carry. She also has a huge HP pool with 20% damage reduction. However, she has some glaring weaknesses as well. She has relatively low accuracy with no buffs, low luck, and no spread reduction, so it's no surprise that she misses more often than the other battleships. On top of that though, a big chunk of her damage comes from her crits, which are also not guaranteed, adding yet another layer of RNG on top. This leads to her having some very low lows in boss fights, while her highs don't quite put her over the other battleships either. On top of that, 
A decent chunk of her damage depends on her proccing her proximity barrage, and if the enemy has no way to do so, she loses yet another chunk of her potential DPS. Like Bismarck's way, she has different effects on odd and even salvos, but unlike Bismarck, her odd salvos are weaker, meaning that the weaker salvos come before the stronger ones, making her deal less than her average expected DPS if the fight ends on an odd salvo. And lastly, while she is very tanky herself, she offers no protection to the other ships in the fleet in chapters like 14 and 15. While it's not actually a weakness that can be attributed to her directly, the fact that Musashi can do so makes it hard to justify ever using FTG over Musashi in the mob fleet for those stages, which is the only place she has an advantage over most other rainbow battleships. To summarize, FTG, very much like New Jersey, has had her time in the spotlight being a 4 year old ship, but there are definitely better options these days. Her damage is heavily predicated on getting lucky with critical hits and the enemy being able to trigger her proximity barrage. She is however permanently obtainable, and if you don't have Musashi, she will be your best bet for your campaign mob fleets. Next up is the newest addition to the roster, Sovetsky Soyuz. Strengths, she has many. Weaknesses, not so much. Starting with her damage, it's pretty much the highest out of all the battleships against medium armor if you're using her with at least two battleships, and very good against light and heavy as well. Next is her barrage. Given how it spawns directly on top of the target, and also the sheer size of it, I don't think it's possible for it to miss at all. Even the zaps from Musashi and Bismarck's Way's barrages can miss against concealed enemies in chapters 14 and 15, but Soyuz's barrage looks like it will still end up hitting something and applying its debuffs. It's just so big. <clears throat> While the debuffs of the Glacier is not game-changing when compared to Bismarck's Black Hole, it also directly increases damage taken from all sources. There are definitely going to be cases, especially against a single enemy, where the Iceberg has a higher impact than the Black Hole. And then there is her flexibility. None of the other battleships work quite as well with carriers apart from Kearsarge, and occasionally Bismarck just for the Black Hole. However, it isn't clear cut that Kearsarge is a better carrier buffer than Soyuz right now, the way I see it. While the numbers of the buffs in Kearsarge's kits are higher in total, like I mentioned before, Kearsarge is almost always stuck with Yorktown to activate her buff and implacable for consistency. With Soyuz, they are not requirements, but just options. You're free to use both or neither if you wish to, but you don't really need implacable thanks to Soyuz's slow. And if you stack another slow from someone like Chkolov or Aegir, most bosses aren't going to be moving much anyway. Unlike Kearsarge, Soyuz can play with Shinano and Haku as well, and also unlocks Chkolov as a top tier option, making Soyuz a premier option against heavy armor on top of being the strongest against medium as well. Lastly, she also has the strongest faction buff out of all the rainbow ships, buffing every single major damage stat. Which is better compared to Bismarck's ways, which leaves out aviation in favor of anti-air. And yet, despite being a faction buffer, she has neither restrictions when it comes to what ships she can be sortied with, nor restrictions as to what equipment she can use. In terms of weaknesses, she really has none. I wish her buff when sortied with battleships gave 15% reload rather than 10%, but it's not really a weakness since she's not the slowest out of the bunch anyway. In summary, Soyuz is good against everything and has no weaknesses. The end. And the final ship that shows up with the filters I used is Warspite. Her strength is that she can equip an anti-submarine plane in her auxiliary slot, and her weakness is that she is the only ship here who is weaker than a lot of the gold battleships. Anyways, we have reached the end of the list. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.